In Revelation chapter 11, John told of the many events that would precede the sounding of the seventh trumpet and the second coming of Jesus Christ. The angel gave him a reed like unto a rod, and told him to rise and measure the temple of God, altar, and them that worship therein. But not the court without the temple given to the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. He said, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies, and he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Joseph Smith learned in Doctrine and Covenants section 77 that these witnesses are two prophets to be raised up to prophesy to the Jewish nation in the last days, after they have built the city of Jerusalem in the land of their fathers. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, overcome and kill them. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. They of the people, kindreds, tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days, and not suffer them to be put in graves. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them. After three and a half days the Spirit of life from God entered into them. They stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon those who saw them. They heard a great voice from heaven, saying, Come up hither, and their enemies beheld they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. The same hour there was a great earthquake. Seven thousand men were slain, the tenth part of the city fell, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. The twenty-four elders who sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces, and worshipped him. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. The nations were angry, thy wrath is come, in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. The temple of God was opened in heaven, and in it was seen the ark of the testament, lightnings, voices, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. In Revelation chapters 12 through 14, John wrote about the pre-mortal war in heaven. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. She being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. She brought forth a man-child to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and his throne. Another wonder appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and cast them to the earth, referring to those who followed Satan in the pre-mortal existence. And a dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. In these verses, the woman represented the church of God, her child is the kingdom of our God and his Christ, who rules with a rod of iron, and the dragon is Satan, who wants to devour the kingdom of God and Christ. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared of God, representing the apostasy that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days, or years, in the Joseph Smith translation. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. A loud voice said in heaven, Now is come salvation, strength, the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. 
For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Another voice said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by it. The earth helped the woman, opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 13, John stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up representing the earth's kingdoms, having seven heads with the name of blasphemy and ten crowns upon his ten horns. The beast was like a leopard with the feet of a bear, the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, seat, and great authority. One of his heads was wounded to death, healed, and all the world wondered after him. They worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast and worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast and is able to make war with him? He was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power to continue forty-two months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God's name, tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven, and given power to make war with and overcome the saints, all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. John beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, with two horns like a lamb who spake as a dragon, representing a false prophet who appears to represent Jesus Christ, but teaches Satan's false doctrines. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He will do great wonders, like making fire come down from heaven, and deceive those who dwell on the earth, with those miracles he had power to do in the sight of the beast. He will say they should make an image to the beast, who was wounded by a sword and lived, and had power to give life unto the image of the beast to speak and kill those who would not worship it. He would cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, and free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or foreheads, And no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. We don't know the significance of the number 666. Some suggest that six, one less than seven, representing divine perfection and completeness, may represent Satan's imperfect and counterfeit character. In Revelation chapter 14, John saw the last days. A lamb stood on Mount Sion with 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. He heard a voice from heaven as many waters, a great thunder, and the voice of harpers harping with their harps. They sung a new song before the throne, the four beasts, and the elders that no man could learn but the 144,000 redeemed from the earth, who were virgins, Follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, and were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. No guile was found in their mouth, and they are without fault before the throne of God. John saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven, earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. A third angel followed and said with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. 
and be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they who worship the beast and receive the mark of his name have no rest day nor night. Here is the patience of the saints that keep God's commandments and the faith of Jesus. I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. John then sought two harvests. When the gospel was restored, and God's judgment upon the wicked, he beheld one like unto the Son of Man sitting on a white cloud, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, having a sharp sickle, and another angel came from the altar, which had power over fire, with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. The angel thrust his sickle into the earth, gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And this is Revelation, chapters 11 through 14, in the New Testament. Look for hidden images located in the video. You can support Ponderfund by visiting our Etsy site, ponderfund.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this Ponderfund YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.